Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Before I start, I'd like to say if you like my content, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you know when we upload and also leave a like and comment. With that said, let's get into it. So I figured I'd make a video and see how I think Ron DeSantis would do against Joe Biden. Sometime next week, I plan on making a primary video about Trump versus DeSantis and all the other candidates that are in the race. But for now, I am going to be focusing on the general election, Joe Biden versus Ron DeSantis. So we're going to start by filling out these solid Democrat states, and those are going to be Washington, Oregon, California, Hawaii, Colorado, Illinois, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Vermont, Maine's first congressional district, and the District of Columbia. I'm going to fill in these solid states for Ron DeSantis, and those are going to be Montana, Idaho, Utah, Wyoming, Alaska, North and South Dakota, Nebraska at large, and its first and third congressional districts, Kansas, Oklahoma, Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, West Virginia, South Carolina, and because Ron DeSantis is very popular here, the state of Florida. So now I'm going to fill in the likely states for Joe Biden. The first of those is going to be the state of New Mexico. New Mexico is a pretty blue state, and Joe Biden won the state in 2020 by almost 11 points. And that is mostly due to how much Trump tanked in the suburbs in 2020. I think Ron DeSantis would probably do a little bit better in the suburbs and also do better among Hispanic voters in the state of New Mexico. So I think it will shift right a couple points, probably be like a nine-point victory for Joe Biden. So I am calling it likely Democrat. There's kind of a similar story in the state of Virginia, too. Trump lost the state in 2020 by about 10 points, again, mostly because he completely collapsed in the suburbs. Like I said, I think DeSantis is going to do better in the suburbs than Trump did in 2020. So I do think Virginia is probably going to shift a point or two to the right, just like I think New Mexico is going to, to make this a likely Democrat state for Joe Biden. Especially considering the fact that Virginia currently has a Republican governor, Glenn Youngkin, it's clear that Republicans can do well in Virginia under the right circumstances, but the Trump brand of conservatism just doesn't do well in Virginia. And although Ron DeSantis is now running against Trump, he is still aligned with Trump on a lot of issues, and so he wouldn't win Virginia, but it would be a little bit closer. So the next likely Democrat state is going to be the state of Minnesota. In 2016, Donald Trump got deceptively close to winning this state. He, uh, I believe Hillary Clinton only won the state by a little less than two points, which was way closer than anyone expected. And so going into the 2020 election cycle, people expected Minnesota to be really competitive. Ultimately, Biden ended up winning the state by a little more than seven points, which is way further to the left of these three states here than it voted in 2016. I think DeSantis is going to improve upon Trump's performance in 2020, in 2024. And again, that's because of the suburbs, which is going to be a running theme in this video, if you couldn't tell already. Although I think DeSantis will do better, I don't think he's going to be able to drop the margin into the low single digits, so I am still calling Minnesota likely Democrat. Next, I'm going to talk about the states of Maine at large and New Hampshire. The reason I'm grouping them together is because they are very similar states. They are both very, very white, and whites across the country typically vote for Republicans by a narrow margin, but in New England, they vote much more Democratic, and they're a lot more liberal. In 2016, Trump almost won New Hampshire. He was less than a point off from winning, and Maine was actually surprisingly close, only voting for Hillary Clinton by around three points. Then in 2020, Joe Biden improved upon Hillary Clinton's margins by a lot in these states. New Hampshire ended up voting for Biden by seven points, and Maine at large went to Biden by nine. DeSantis would probably do a little bit better than Trump among whites, but I still think that both of these states would vote for Biden by over six points, so I am calling them both likely Democrat. Next up, I'm going to talk about the likely Republican states, starting with the state of Texas. So Texas is a state that in the early 2000s and really mostly through the 2010s was a solid Republican state, but when Trump was elected in 2016, the margin of victory went down to about 9%. This was a pretty big swing away from Mitt Romney's win in 2012 when he won the state by around 16 points. And George Bush in the 2000s was winning Texas by like 30 points, although Texas was his home state, so he did have that advantage. But still, Texas went from being very solidly Republican to still being decently Republican, but being a single-digit margin, which was really one of the first real signs that Texas was becoming more favorable to Democrats. Then in 2018, Ted Cruz almost lost. He only won by two points. And although that was a blue wave year, that was still a surprisingly close election for Ted Cruz. 
And then in 2020, Trump's margin of victory in the state dropped from nine points to a little less than six points. And part of the reason that Trump's margin of victory was as big as six points and not even lower is because even though he regressed in the suburbs like he did really around the country, he was able to improve upon his own margins in the Rio Grande Valley from 2016. I think DeSantis is going to be able to keep up Trump's trends in the Rio Grande Valley and also have some suburban regression to the Republicans. So I do think that Texas is going to shift a couple points to the right if Ron DeSantis is the nominee. I think he probably wins Texas by six or seven points. Next up is going to be the state of Ohio. Ohio is a state that voted for Trump twice by eight points each time. I think DeSantis will probably run in line with Trump. He might suffer a little bit in the rurals, although I really doubt he will. It just might be a little bit lower turnout because rural voters just tend to turn out for Trump. But that'll be offset by the fact that he will do a little bit better in the suburbs. So he'll probably win the state by roughly the same margin as Trump did. Finally, we're going to go up to Maine's 2nd Congressional District. I think that will also be likely for Ron DeSantis. Donald Trump won this district by 10 in 2016, and then he only won it by 6 or 7 in 2020. I think Ron DeSantis will probably have no problem winning this district, especially if Trump was able to win it in 2020 despite everything. I think Ron DeSantis will carry it easily, so I'm calling it likely Republican. So now we're down to our seven main swing states. I'm going to cover these west to east, starting with the state of Nevada. Nevada has swung right in every election since 2008, including in 2020 when it swung against the national trend. Republicans recently have been doing better in rural Nevada and in Clark County, which is where Las Vegas is, but they've been doing worse in Washoe County, which is where Reno is. I think DeSantis is going to keep up the trend of Nevada sw swinging right, so I am going to call Nevada tilt to lean Republican. We'll call it tilt for now for DeSantis. Next up is going to be the state of Arizona. Arizona is almost like the opposite of Nevada. It's been swinging left in basically every election since 2008. In 2012, Romney won Arizona by around nine points. And then in 2016, Trump only won Arizona by three. And then, of course, Joe Biden flipped the state in 2020. Of course, like the trends in the rest of the country, this is largely because the suburbs are getting a lot bluer. In fact, the county that Joe Biden flipped in 2020 was Maricopa County, where the Phoenix suburbs are. That was a county that Republicans have won for a long time that Joe Biden was able to flip. He flipped it by a couple points and thus was able to win the state. In 2022, Republicans thought they had a chance to hold the governorship and flip back the Senate, but... In an upset in the governor race and in what was kind of expected in the Senate race, Democrats won both of those races. And even though Carrie Lake and Blake Masters weren't great candidates, it still goes to show that trends are bad for Republicans and good for Democrats in this state. I do think that Arizona would be extremely close, but at the current moment, I do think that Joe Biden would narrowly hold on to Arizona by a tilt margin, so I'm calling it tilt Democrat. Next up is going to be Nebraska's second congressional district. I've been talking this entire video about how I think Ron DeSantis is going to do better than Donald Trump in the suburbs, and Nebraska's 2nd Congressional District is basically all of Omaha and its suburbs. In 2020, Trump lost this district by 6.5% roughly, but during redistricting, it did get a little bit more Republican. I still think that Joe Biden is going to win this district, but because of all of the factors I mentioned before, I'm calling it lean Democrat instead of likely. I think he probably wins it by around 5 points. Next up is going to be the state of Wisconsin. In 2016, Trump surprisingly flipped the state by a very narrow margin. And then in 2020, Joe Biden flipped it back by an even tighter margin. Ever since 2016, Wisconsin has looked pretty bleak for Republicans. Although it's always been close for the most part, Democrats just keep winning in the state. In 2018, Scott Walker, the incumbent Republican governor, lost re-election to Tony Evers. And then in 2020... Republicans thought they were going to be able to knock off Tony Evers, but then he surprisingly won by about three points again anyway. Also in 2022, Ron Johnson, the incumbent Republican senator, was running for re-election, and he was expected to win by a fairly wide margin and then only ended up winning by one point. So Republicans have been underperforming in Wisconsin recently. With the way things are going for Republicans in Wisconsin right now, I do still think Joe Biden would probably narrowly win it. Even though Ron DeSantis might do better in the WOW counties, I still don't think it'll be enough for him to win. So I am calling it Tilt Democrat. Next up is going to be the state of Michigan. Michigan is a lot like Wisconsin, except it's more favorable to Democrats. Trump won it in a fluke in 2016, and ever since then, Republicans have just kind of collapsed. In 2018, they elected a Democratic governor, and in 2022... 
Gretchen Whitmer won again by 10 points. I don't expect Michigan to be that lopsided for Joe Biden, but I do ex- expect him to win by a comfortable two to three points, so I am calling Michigan lean Democrat. Next up, we're going to go down to Georgia. Georgia is very similar to Arizona, it just in terms of trends. Romney won it by, I think, around seven points in 2012, and then Trump won it by around five in 2016, and then, surprisingly, it flipped in 2020. Also in 2020, the Senate races flipped both the regular and special election to the Democrats. And in 2022, the election to the full term was also won by the incumbent Democrat Raphael Warnock. However, in 2022, Georgia did prove that they will still elect Republicans depending on the popularity and their ideology, unlike in Arizona where Republicans were pretty much swept across the board except for one office. Republicans pretty much exclusively won statewide in Georgia other than the Senate election in 2022. It seems like Georgians really care about optics, and Ron DeSantis undeniably has a lot better optics than Donald Trump. So even though the trends overall, demographically and otherwise in Georgia, are not good for Republicans overall, I do think Ron DeSantis will be able to narrowly flip the state, so I am calling Georgia tilt Republican. Moving on to the state of North Carolina, a lot of Republicans like to say that this is a perpetually lean Republican state, and although I do disagree with that, Long term, because of the trends, I do think Ron DeSantis would win here. I think he'd improve on Trump's margin by around two points, maybe. Although North Carolina used to regularly vote to the left of Georgia, at this point, it's almost like Georgia, but a couple points to the right. And so I do think Ron DeSantis would win it by a couple points, so I'm calling it lean Republican. Finally, we have the great state of Pennsylvania. Similar to Michigan and Wisconsin, Donald Trump flipped Pennsylvania for the first time in a long time in 2016 by a very narrow margin, and then Joe Biden flipped it back by a little more than a point in 2020. And just like Wisconsin and Michigan, Republicans have not performed well in Pennsylvania ever since 2016. In 2018, in the Senate race in Pennsylvania, Bob Casey won by about 13 points, and then in 2022, John Fetterman flipped the seat that was held by Republican Pat Toomey to the Democrats. So that's actually the first time uh, that Democrats held both of these seats since like the 1940s. Also in 2022, Josh Shapiro was elected governor in what was supposed to be a red wave year. He won by 15 points, which is kind of unheard of in an open election in Pennsylvania. And a large part of the reason that Josh Shapiro won so big here last year is because of Doug Mastriano's stance on abortion. Mastriano said some pretty far-right things on abortion, and that did not sit well in the suburbs, and even the rural areas kind of swung against Republicans in 2022 in the governor election. The reason I bring that up is because DeSantis, I think last month, signed a six-week abortion bill, excuse me, an abortion ban bill, and I think that has the potential to hurt him in Pennsylvania, along with other things, just like trends in Pennsylvania don't look good for Republicans, like the western part of Pennsylvania, which tends to vote more Republican than the eastern part is losing population while the eastern part is gaining population. And so these things just don't bode well for Republicans in Pennsylvania. So I do think that Joe Biden is probably going to carry Pennsylvania by around two points. So I am calling it lean Democrat. So with all of these states filled out, we have Joe Biden narrowly winning re-election against Ron DeSantis 281 to 257. And this is largely because it is extremely difficult to knock off an incumbent president. I mean, looking at 2020, Trump was fairly unpopular. There was the COVID pandemic that struck right at the end of his presidency that kind of tanked his chances, along with racial unrest in the summer of 2020 that kind of lasted until the election. And even with all of that combined, Trump still barely lost. So a lot is going to have to happen for Joe Biden to lose this election, in my opinion. At this point, I do think that Ron DeSantis is a stronger challenger than Donald Trump because I think, like I said all video, he he would be able to do better in the suburbs than Trump would. And a lot of people, especially Trump supporters, think that DeSantis might struggle to get Trump's numbers in the rural areas. And I think this might be a slight problem for him, you know, to an extent, but it shouldn't be that much of a problem for him because people like Glenn Youngkin in Virginia and even Ron DeSantis himself in his last election prove that they can do better in the suburbs and cities and still do well in the rural areas. Of course, the 2024 general election is about 18 months away, and frankly, Ron DeSantis isn't even really favored to win the primary against Donald Trump right now, so we'll probably never even know what this matchup looks like in reality. 
But I thought since he just announced, I'd give my take on how he would do in the general election. And next week, I am going to do a video about DeSantis versus Trump in the primary. So keep an eye out for that. Anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, leave a like and comment and subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you know when we upload. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.